Hi everyone, welcome to IT2750 for fall of 2020, scripting fundamentals for cybersecurity. We're going to talk about Python and how it relates to awesome topics in cybersecurity and cybersecurity scripting. My name is Matt Crowley. I'll be teaching you over the next 14 weeks. We're going to cover a lot of content, but I really hope that this is not only interesting, but is a great stepping stone in your IT or cybersecurity career. A little bit about me. I'm the CEO of a local startup, Signal Cortex. We focus on enterprise communications and uh, enterprise voice assistance. I also run a local consultancy, uh, Cypress Lake, where we do cybersecurity risk analyses for airports and government agencies. I have a deep software engineering background. I was a former engineer at Microsoft and uh, CTO of a browser virtualization company. So a lot of background in scripting and coding and cybersecurity and a lot of random things. Um, so this class is going to be, like I said, a lot of content and you know a slightly shorter period of time than usual. I've run this before at 16 weeks. Um, we're going to go over essentially some key pieces of the Python language and then tie each of those pieces to a different cybersecurity topic. So we're going to look at cryptanalysis, we're going to look at steg analysis and uh, regular expressions and how we manage risk and a whole bunch of topics, but each tied to one different step of Python. The big expectation in this course is that you have taken a previous programming course. So we're not going to start from scratch learning programming. So you have to be a little familiar with either Java or C Sharp or another language that you took in a prior programming course, either at Tri-C or if you learned on your own or somewhere else. So again, we're not relearning programming in general, but for many of you, this will be your first time uh, jumping into a new area or a new language. So it, it will be a little slow. It's like I've learned a, a second language once and I'm learning my third language or my fourth language. It gets easier over time and if you choose a programming career that's going to be expected of you. So there will be some stumblings around and that's fine. That's what we're all here for and we're going to work together uh, to make this an excellent experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump through some of the items in Blackboard. I'm going to walk you through the textbook uh, on Cengage, uh, an alternate textbook as well that we're going to supplement with, which I really like called Automate the Boring Stuff, um, and uh, as well as talk about GitHub because we're going to use GitHub for our labs. So let's walk through all of this. So when you log into the Blackboard site for the first time, uh, it will take you to the announcements page. You'll know it's this class because I put a little banner up there. Make sure you're regularly checking the announcements. I typically copy the announcements to your email as well, uh, to your Tri-C email account. So you'll see it both in Blackboard and as a secondary method, you'll see it in your email. No guarantees on that because each time I have to check the box and, and I have missed it in the past. So always check the announcements page. Typically I'll send one to two announcements a week based on what's due and it'll just keep you up to date on what, what you need to do, what you need to know, and what's going on. The Start Here page contains a bunch of different topics that you really should read first, hence Start Here. Um, so just a little welcome. Um, I talk about the different topics that you need to know right off the bat. So first is the course syllabus. I always say the course syllabus is our contract together. So by taking this course, we're holding each other to a set of standards and that's outlined in the course syllabus. Um, it gives, my office hours are virtual. So as needed, uh, contact me uh, and we can set up a time to talk or we can talk over email. Um, I put my phone up uh, if you really need help, but I really encourage you to email me. Um, I'm in a lot of meetings. I'm not traveling around so much with everything going on, but I usually am extremely busy with work during the day. So shoot me an email. Um, and again, ju just to be clear, I try to get to the emails as fast as possible, but do expect it could take up to 48 hours uh, depending on where I'm at and what I'm doing. So Again, don't send me an emergency email on a Sunday if you started your assignment on a Sunday when it's due. Um, 
I talk about the course title. It, this is all online. Again, the prerequisite is IT 1050 or equivalent knowledge. So again, we're not learning programming from scratch. We are jumping into another language with knowledge that you had before. Uh, drop dates, no record, September 22nd, W grade on November 20th. Again, I believe those are correct, but always refer to Tri-C's uh, official calendar for those dates. Um, various, uh, you're getting three credit hours for the course, uh, two hours of lecture, two hour of lab a week is expected of you. Um, you can read through a lot of this yourself, uh, but let's jump to the course outcomes. Um, I have outlined seven course outcomes that are also in the official Tri-C syllabus for the course. And this is what we're going to make sure that you know by completing this course. So again, you can dig into those on your own. Two textbooks, um, one is paid, one is free. Uh, the Mind Tap for Cengage's Python Fundamentals. Um, a lot of IT courses here use Cengage. Uh, typically it's a subscription uh, that covers all the books that they provide. So we're going to throw in the Python Fundamentals. Uh, book there. Also automate the boring stuff with Python. The reason I use two books is because people learn in different ways and the way this content is presented uh, is different in these books. It's pretty much the same, but you might find that one is easier to use than the other. Uh, I, again, I personally like automate the boring stuff, but um, you know, it's, it's really your choice. Each week I provide the equivalent readings in each book. Um, so it's, it is your decision. Um, a lot of this stuff is boilerplate from the college, so please read at your leisure. Um, attendance, just something important. You have to uh, log in two times per week and submit at least, at least one assignment each week for the first two weeks of our course. If you don't, I have to automatically drop you. So make sure that you are doing that because I'm required to put in attendance. Um, conceal carry statement. Obviously, we are online. Um, here is the grading policy. And uh, I just want to also make clear, if I have to make a change to the syllabus, let's say we drop a lab assignment um, or a lot of times, you know, depending how everybody does, I have the discretion of making a decision to, um, let's say, let's drop an assignment. Um, if something was super difficult for everyone, I may change this. Um, this is what we're going into though. So you should expect that this is the general breakdown of your grades for the course. And we use the traditional grading scale for tri c 90 80 70 60 for a b c d and f i have always wondered why there's no e but is what it is here is the general course schedule also subject to change um it's really based on how we're doing as a group um so i may change some of this i may extend a week or or make some alteration based on how we are progressing uh, and each week, you should expect three things, a lab, a quiz, and a discussion board. Now, when we talk about week one, um, you're going to look at the list of things to do and your mind might explode a little bit. It's okay. Week one is all about just setting things up. The quiz is super easy. The lab is super easy. And the discussion board is just you telling us about yourself. So... Um, it seems like a lot of work, but you're going to really be spending your time setting up your system. And then each week going forward, you have a lab, a quiz, and a discussion board. Now, dates are important as well. Discussion boards are always two parts. Your initial post is due by Thursday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. Two replies to your peers are due by Saturday at 11.59 Eastern. The initial post must be 100 words or more. The reply posts must be 50 words each or more. And each reply post must be to a different person. So you can't just reply twice to one person. Um, I'm a stickler for dates and I'm a stickler for adhering to the assignments. So if it's under 100 words, you get a zero. If you don't turn it in by 11.59 p.m., you get a zero. Um, we have a lot of content in the course and it's really important that you keep up. Uh, the last two weeks will be a group project. I will be putting people into groups, and there'll be uh, two sets, one you'll, two weeks. One you'll plan the project, and one 
you will develop and do a quick slide presentation of your project. Um, we'll get into that more. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, last semester, I guess this was in the spring, um, I got some good feedback. So we're going to continue doing it that way. Late work. I don't accept late work. Um, if something serious and legitimate comes up, you pick up COVID. Uh, you have a death in the family. As long as you provide proper documentation, we can work together to adjust dates. Otherwise, I will not allow for late work. Um, this is on a case-by-case -case basis only and at my discretion. Um, this is a very important concept that I want to talk about. The, it's the line between help and tutoring. Um, I am here to guide you. I am here to provide initial, initial lessons for you, answer questions. If you run into an issue where you, where you are not fundamentally understanding the concepts, I'm going to direct you to tutoring. Um, tutoring is a great way. Again, people learn differently and sometimes talking to tutors or your peers is more helpful than me rehashing concepts uh, for you because, you know, I've already presented it in one way and it didn't work. So, you know, there, there may be a time where I recommend tutoring and that can be a really good thing because again, it allows you that different way of looking at a topic that might help you to understand. Technical help and technology skills. Again, this is boilerplate from Tri-C. We talk about incompletes, pass, no pass. You should be familiar with all of this from your other classes, but again, please read this. Uh, student conduct. I do not accept plagiarism, especially in code, and you will immediately be reported to the student judicial system. So just an FYI, I run checks on every piece of code submitted. If you've copied and pasted your code from Stack Overflow, you risk being removed from the course on the first attempt. I, I refer this to the college. They make the decision on what happens. So just remember your sanctions for cheating. Your sanctions for plagiarism can range from, uh, you know, an assignment being a zero to, you know, you being removed from the course to whatever other step program the college has. So I don't put up with it, um, so please don't do it. Uh, degree works, campus security again, please read through all of this. Um, this is extremely important because of discussion boards um, and because right now we're in a very interesting um, place. I know everybody has a lot of different views on what's going on in the world. Um, Please be kind to each other. Uh, we, you know, debate is always good, um, but we need to make sure that we're respectful of each other. So, um, don't say anything threatening. Honestly, I would just avoid um, being mean to each other because, again, it just creates a negative environment. Like I said, I want to encourage you to speak your mind. Um, just be considerate of others. That's all I ask. Um, the coronavirus statement, um, especially right now, this is really important. Make sure you understand that um, there's some requirements by the school if you have to go in certain requirements. Um, but also when I talk about late work, listen, if you get this, I understand your life is upended. You know, Even though I have a no late work policy, when life throws you a curveball like this, um, clearly will work out things. Even if it's at the end of the course, we can, you know, extend it with an incomplete. We'll figure it out, right? So um, just be careful, be safe, be healthy. All right, so that's the syllabus. Um, the Cengage textbook, and I misspelled that, so I got to fix it. Um, by the way, I'm making this video while I'm still kind of posting the last things. Like this video has to be posted on Start Here. So the Cengage textbook, here's some instructions. Here's a link. And if you don't already have Cengage, you'll have to follow the prompts and make a payment. Um, since we're talking about cybersecurity, we really need to talk about ethics. Um, I am a CISSP and CCSP with ISC Squared. And one of my favorite codes is theirs because it's four bullet points. But it basically says do no harm. Only do things that you're authorized to do. 
Um, not only is it just good practice, it will save you a lot of heartache and it will keep the uh, FBI from knocking on your door. So please look at the ethical considerations. And then online learning items, these are from Tri-C. Uh, these provide some basic um, tools and resources that you could use throughout the online course. Okay, um, everything in the course that you need uh, besides this initial overview is in course content. So I have a link to start here just in case you missed it. Also, click here to start here. But uh, each week, uh, and I've really only displayed the current, maybe I shouldn't have moved my window, uh, the current week's information up here. Um, week one is set up an introduction to Python. So again, I'm going to repeat, there is an expectation that you have a previous programming course. So we're not learning you know, what a variable is. We're not learning what an if statement is. The expectation is you know that. All right, so we have uh, just an overview. Now, this is really long. Again, don't let your brain explode here. Uh, a lot of this stuff will take you a couple seconds. Okay, right, number one, do everything in the Start Here folder. Next, you're watching this video, so you've created step two already, or done step two already. Next, set up your system. So I've, I've created tutorials for each of these things, setting up Python, setting up Visual Studio Code, if you don't have a GitHub account, go sign up for one and how to install GitHub Desktop. Um, there's either 60 or 80 videos that I created for each of these things throughout the course. So you know, over the next 14 weeks, if you're ever stuck, go watch a video because um, um, they're, they're very detailed. Also with the labs, hint, hint, um, if you watch the lab videos that I post you'll notice that you can read between the lines for a lot of the answers, right? I'm not, I am, uh, with the quizzes, with the labs, I am not trying to trick you. What I want you to do is practice, be repetitive. Once you learn this information over and over and over again, you'll do great. A test isn't gonna help you, right? You'll notice in the class there's no final exam. In this, in, in programming like this, I don't truly believe in final exams. I think a project, I think repetition is more important than sitting there on a final exam. So uh, go set that stuff up. Do your discussion board for the week ASAP. Again, it's just about you. Talk about yourself, why you chose this career path. And then we begin the lesson. So we have two different readings in the reading folder, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. And then I have two videos. One is about um, idle expressions and primitive variables in Python, and then using Python to create script files. And once you skim the weekly readings, once you watch these videos, if there's any topic you didn't understand, just go back to the readings, go back to the videos. After you do that, take your quiz. It's five questions. You have unlimited attempts. This is a really easy one. Um, you know, for instance, I ask you, you know, what is the, um, command line tool slash command line IDE you use for Python? Um, you'll learn that in watch idle expressions and primitive variables. Maybe idle might be the answer to that. And then the other answers might be Tesla, ABCDE. Like I said, the quizzes are not supposed to trick you. These are free points. And this really goes back to as long as you put the time and energy and turn things in by the due date, you're going to get an A in this class, right? Even the labs, if you look at the rubrics, you just have to try, right? You don't have to be perfect. You're going to have errors sometimes. That doesn't mean that you can't get an A as long as you work hard and turn your assignments in. So you take the quiz and then do the lab. And I have a video on GitHub Classroom, a tutorial video. You're gonna accept the assignment. So you're gonna click this link. It's gonna take you to GitHub. You log in and then you're magically added to our class. Um, I provide a week one lab guidance video. I highly suggest you watch that because you could literally do the lab while watching the video. I walk through the whole thing. Um, and then you'll save your work and commit the code. And in the tutorial video, I show you how to do that. 
and then you need to relax because this is literally the hardest week of the class. And it's really just because there's so much content. It's not the caliber of the content. It is simply there's just a lot of pieces, right? You're going to need Visual Studio Code. You're going to need Python installed for every single week. You don't have to do that next week. You don't have to do that for the next you know, 12 subsequent weeks after that. And like I said, if you have questions, email me. Oh, jump back to key dates. Always remember, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, I know Thanksgiving falls in this semester. I'm going to keep the date on Thursday, but just do it on Tuesday. You'll also notice that after week one, the discussion boards are the same every week. You're going to just talk about a news article or a blog post from the past 30 days. That's interesting. Um, so just do it early. Um that's the only thing ever due on a Thursday is just the first discussion board post. Your two responses are due on a Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, you're expected to complete your quiz and push your lab to the Git repository. All right. Each week, the structure is the same. You have three folders, readings, videos, graded assignments. Readings, you're going to get now two different readings. One is uh, automate the boring stuff which you'll see here. It's a web link. Um, you go ahead like week one is just Python basics. And I really love this book. Um, I also love that it's free, but it just talks about like the basics of Python. Um, and then also there is Cengage Python Fundamentals. And here I say module one, lessons one, 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 four. So once you sign up for Cengage in the Start Here section, you're actually seeing my view. Ignore the grade part because, again, we're not using Cengage for the quizzes or anything. Um, you'll want to read Working with Python, Writing and Running Scripts, Python Syntax, and User Input. So Lessons 1.1 1, 1 through 1.4. You don't have to do any of these activities. Just you know, skim the readings. There's also a PowerPoint deck. What I've done is I've removed all the quizzes and stuff from Cengage because, again, we're just using it for the content. I like to write my own quizzes in labs. I think that it's a bit more relatable uh, and it uh, really coincides with the topics that I want to teach. So you know, the whole book is available here for you, uh, and that's on the Cengage side. If we go back to core week one. All right, so next is videos. Every week, I have lots of videos for you, right? Any topic that you might have questions about, there is a video. Um, this will be replaced with um, the video I'm making right now, this first one, Course Introduction. But installing Python, installing Visual Studio Code, there's lots of information for you. Again, I wanted to provide as much information as I could. Okay, and then the last thing, graded assignments. These are the things that are due. Remember, discussion boards, Thursday, Saturday. Quiz and lab, Sunday. The quiz. Hmm. Why don't I do this? Let's begin our quiz. Oh, look at this. Uh, in Python, do you need to explicitly declare a type when creating a new variable? What function in Python do we use? Oh, here we go. What is the name of the built-in interactive shell that comes with a typical Python installation. Idle, A, B, C, D, E, boring, or Tesla. I think it's going to be idle. So again, every week, um, like I said, I try to just encourage repetition. I am not here to ruin your day with yet another test. Um, you know, all this is the hardest question, review and the following code and answer the preceding question. And I will say a lot of times, um, you know, maybe the thing I selected is right. A lot of times you can read the question and the answer and just deduce uh, what the proper answer is if you're confused. But what this really gets is not to not to ruin your life with a test, but to ensure that you're seeing the same content over and over and over again, because eventually it sticks. So this is what a quiz looks like. Uh, there's no time limit. You can take the test as many times as you want. I would suggest you write down, oh, I got you know three out of five points this time, four out of five points this time. Well, what did you change from the previous test? Because each time you take that test, it's more repetition. So that's what a quiz looks like. And in the very last 
Uh, yes, I want to leave that. Okay, the very last part of this is the lab. Now, the labs are... Um, uh, they're going to be more complicated than this going forward. But the whole point of week one's lab is to just get you to install the tools, get you signed up for GitHub, and then um, putting some basic code out on GitHub that if you watch the lab video, I'll show you how to do. So each lab is broken up into a couple parts. One, this first uh, GitHub classroom assignment link, that's each week you're going to have a different link, and that's where you register for... Um, this week's lab and it adds it to your github account so make sure you do that first next part is the assignment description I talk about what the heck you're doing in this assignment usually we're tying a piece of cybersecurity information to a piece of Python that we're learning and then finally the or not finally the second to last the lab steps we walk through what you're gonna do so here we're gonna install the tools you're gonna sign up for github you're gonna fetch the repository um, follow the instructions and then commit your code back to github and I walk through all those steps and then with each lab I provide a rubric I want to be very transparent of how I grade the lab so number one you get it's all 10 points for the labs submission if you submit it you get a, a point for free right submission was pushed on time and pushed it all or you didn't bother right the next one, I'm asking you in the lab part one to create two variables. Um, if you follow the instructions, it's a three. If you follow most of the instructions, it's a two. If the code doesn't work at all, um, but you put something there, it's a one. And if you didn't submit any work or you didn't follow instructions at all, it's a zero. And that's the same for each of these. Part two, I ask you to take uh, input as a number from a user. And then part three, you accept a string from a user. Uh, same rubric. So we, we break this down. There's one point for just turning it in, nine points for doing the work. And every week, it's going to be 10 points for the lab. And that's it. The final piece of the course, the last two weeks, will be a group project. And uh, again, it's supposed to be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you to create your own cybersecurity app in Python. And right now, that might seem crazy, but it is really fun. It's uh, it's a little bit of work, but um, it's not something that is going to be so daunting uh, that you have to be worried about your grade. So it, it's more of, I want you to spend the time uh, to learn about how to do these things. All right, so that's it. Um, Again, if you have questions, shoot me an email. I do hope you have fun this semester. I know that it's all online. It's a bit different than me teaching in front of a classroom. Um, but I did this 100% online in the spring, and it turned out pretty well in this format. So, um, like I said, ask me if you have any questions. I hope you enjoy the course. And uh, one other thing, um, I'm going to try and add a WebEx Teams channel. Um hopefully in the next few days so that you can all ask each other questions uh, if you have any issues i really encourage you to work with each other you're gonna have to work with each other the last two weeks but during the course don't always feel as though i gotta go straight to the professor to ask a question um please work with each other right like when you go work uh, at a company as a it employer a cybersecurity employer a programmer um, you got to work with your teams. You got to ask questions of your teams. You have to lean on your teams and depend on your teams. It's it's not just you're out for yourself to get an A. And that's why I really like the group project because it encourages us to be dependent upon each other to raise everybody up. So um, I really encourage you to talk to your classmates. Um, this is something again you're going to have to work with folks when you're a developer. Start early. Start now, uh, get used to it. So um, have fun, have a good day, have a good week. Uh, ask me any questions you need and I will talk to you soon.